What's Going On by Christina Anderson Chapter 3 Preference and Desires In Chapter 1 we spoke about this reality of relativity and in Chapter 2 we explored the concept that we volunteered to come into this realm of relativity. There are many different opinions on what we are supposed to do or achieve while we are in this life and as I said in the last chapter I don't think there's anything in particular we have to do other than just experience relativity. It sounds so easy when you say it, but relativity hurts. Pain, suffering, loneliness, hunger, cold, fear, insecurity, these are all faces of relativity. These are the negative aspects of relativity. I feel that humans are so hard on themselves, we spend so much time trying to prove ourselves, to be accepted, do the right thing, understand people, and find love and security in our lives, and yet we don't give ourselves enough credit for the fact we are simply surviving on a day-to-day -day basis in one of the most unhospitable realities imaginable. No wonder we are worshipped, respected and adored from the other side. You are so brave just to have come into this world. If you do nothing more than survive it and then go home, you are a winner and a very brave soul. Now we will explore the effect we have by choosing to come into this reality. There are some that feel life is simply a series of unconnected coincidences or chaos, and there are others on the other extreme that think that everything is fate. It is the age-old argument, free will versus fate. My truth is that we are right in the middle between those two extreme thoughts. The truth is humans are capable of defining reality as we go. However, there are certain experiences our souls also wish to have. We will meet the people and be involved in the circumstances that are necessary to have those experiences. One of the effects of relativity is that through our experiences we get the chance to form preferences. It is done automatically. Every time you encounter the positive and the negative of a situation or thing, your mind automatically forms a preference. I prefer that to that. For example, we have an opportunity to eat pumpkin and then we have an opportunity to eat chocolate. At that point our minds are capable of expressing a preference in our food taste. Let's say chocolate. Take that concept a step further and experience many more different types of food and now you are well on your way to experiencing a desire. I desire chocolate, I like chocolate, I want chocolate in my life. It is not something you have to state. It is simply a desire you put out into the universe through having formed the preferences automatically. The longer we live in this reality, the more exposure we have to an extraordinary range of experiences, allowing us to make more and more preferences which translate into sharper and sharper desires. Now here comes the best part. The universe is then ready, willing and able to bring us the sharpest desires. This is the most extraordinary thing about the universe. It is here to serve us on this journey, and that which we desire the most, the universe will deliver to us. Hence the saying, be careful what you wish for, and ask and it is given. This concept applies not only to the individual on a personal level, but to the community you live in, the country you live in, and ultimately the entire world population. Every moment of every day we are creating preferences and desires which eventually manifest themselves into our reality. The net effect of this system is that as the world progresses and more and more humans experience more and more situations, things and feelings, we develop more and more preferences. These lead to the desires which our universe provides. So ultimately we are co-creating our own world and universe on a personal level and on a global level, thus forever expanding what we are, what we have and what we are capable of. As I mentioned before, this reality holds within it the potential for all that is and all that ever will be. Humanity is ultimately responsible for what experiences we attract to ourselves based on what our collective thoughts are. These experiences are then a reflection of what we as people believe ourselves to be. As soon as humans create something, as in is in nature, we will then desire improvement, which virtually guarantees that the universe will continue to expand. Over time we get closer and closer to our desires until we obtain those desires. Then our new preferences, which are created from the relativity of the new situation, go on to create new desires. The game is never over, it never ends. There is no end point where all your desires are met. 
Your new perfect reality will produce more preferences and hence more desires and on the game goes, never ending for all eternity. So while we are here experiencing the relativity to obtain our own definition of who we really are, we are also co-creating our own reality and participating in the creation of humanity's reality at the same time. It's pure genius really and all within our control. The only glitch in this perfect plan is that humans have such power in their thoughts, words and actions that we often manifest into our reality situations that are not a true reflection of who we really consider ourselves to be. If the universe only created what we thought were our sharpest desires, then the world would probably be a really cool, peaceful place to live. After all, we'd all agree we desire world peace. However, it is not quite that straightforward. We have the ability to change the desires we are projecting to the universe by our thoughts, words and actions on a day-to-day -day basis. And those thoughts, words and actions are not always aligned with that which would create a peaceful and loving place. So let's move on and see how this unfolds. So let's imagine you are a spirit on the other side. Sylvia Brown, a well-renowned psychic and medium, penned one of the most descriptive books written about the other side. Many other writings from mediums and psychics tend to support her theories as well. According to Sylvia, the other side exists in the same form as here. Heaven is not up in the sky, but here on earth, exactly like our reality, but a higher vibrating dimension. Sylvia goes as far to suggest that the topography and geography are very similar to here, but the other side sits about one metre higher than us and vibrates at a much higher rate. She also goes on to talk about great halls which hold the records of our life here on earth. Personally I don't know and truthfully I don't care. I figured there will be enough time to suss it out when I get back, but it does make for some fascinating reading. The important point is that we all do exist on the other side and we live our lives not dissimilar to here but without the relativity. A couple of years back I wrote a short story to try and capture the essence of being a spirit who's volunteered to come into this reality and I would like to share that with you now in the next chapter.